Today, we're going through the five simple steps to learn any song fast. Let's do it. What's going on? Welcome to Beholden to the Riff. My name is Jared, and thank you so much for checking out this video. Recently, my man Al at Evil Dead Bass, who you should definitely check out on Instagram, dude is a beast. He reached out and presented a challenge to learn uh, some Cliff Burton bass lines, a challenge which I happily accepted. I love all the Cliff Burton stuff. I had actually never learned how to play it. I you know, played tons of Metallica on guitar growing up, but had never actually delved into the greatness that is Cliff. So in order to slay this thing in the two week time frame of the challenge, I had to really step back and think about how I was going to do this and come up with a plan. And these five steps are that plan. Each one of these steps are deserving of their own video, if not multiple videos each. But I'm going to give you practical tips where you can start right now. If you haven't thought of learning music like this, this is the place to start. Let's check it out. Picking the right song to learn can be a little tricky, especially when we're first starting out. As beginning musicians, we don't know what we don't know. And personally, I have started way more songs than I have ever finished. I can't tell you the amount of times I've heard a song, charged in, spent hours, maybe days working on this thing only to get super frustrated and burnt out because it just wasn't happening for whatever reason. Maybe too far past my current skill level. Maybe there's techniques. There could be a, a, a bunch of different reasons, but for whatever reason, it, it just wasn't happening. Selecting the right song to learn does get a little easier with experience. However, here's a few things you could try out the next time you're looking for a new song to learn. The first thing to look out for is tempo or the speed of the song, how fast or slow the song is going. Developing speed takes time and generally a few techniques that kind of build on themselves and work together in order to get fast. And when you figure it out, let me know. The second thing to look out for is the number of riffs uh, or sections or the song structure. Generally, if the song is verse, chorus, verse, more standard song structure, it's going to be a little easier to play. Definitely, there are plenty of exceptions to that rule, but this is a good kind of guideline to follow. If a song goes off in outer space for a while and drifts and is 10 minutes long, usually a good sign that it's going to be a little more complicated. Maybe you could learn a riff or two from there, but it's best to start with songs that are a little more straight ahead and straightforward. So the third thing to consider is, do you love this song? Can you fully commit to learning it? It's going to take time and effort and repetition. Committing to actually learning the song is key. And if you're not fully into it, it's probably best to find another one or keep it in mind for later when you can learn it a little more quickly. Now that you're fully committed to slaying your next song, let's move on to step number two, which is plotting the course. So plotting the course is deciding how you're going to learn this song. We got basically two options. We could learn by ear or learn by tab or sheet music. In my experience, Learning a song by ear or figuring it out by just listening to it has been the single most beneficial skill I've, I've, I've learned. Starting out can be really intimidating and I mean, it's easy to get lost. Something that really helped me to, to learn songs by ear was put on a song, listen to maybe the first note and just start on an open string and just go fret by fret and hunt that thing down until you find the note. Just making that connection from hearing it to then finding it and playing it makes a huge difference. And that's where you start and it just gets easier every time you do it. Second way we can learn a song is by checking out the tab or sheet music. 
there may be no single greater moment in my life, especially in my <laughs> young life, when I discovered Tab. I basically just freaked out and printed everything that I could think of. And to this day, there's you know, binders in a desk in my in my home, in my bedroom at home in Wasita, Michigan. There's binders full of Hendrix, Sabbath, Zeppelin, all the tab that I could think of. These seemingly insignificant numbers printed on paper changed my life and just inspired me to learn music and, you know, developed a love of music, which is only, you know, expanded from there. There's plenty of places to find tabs. I'm sure you know them, Ultimate Guitar, Songster. The tabs are easy to find, but sometimes can be inaccurate. Uh, what you gonna do? That's, that's it. When you notice something is wrong, this is a good time, the perfect time to listen to the song and, you know, use your ear and just figure out what's going on. Even though they may be inaccurate, they are extremely useful and extremely beneficial and a great way to, to quickly learn songs and just become a better musician. So let's move on to step number three, which is listening. Deep listening. This is grab your headphones, close your eyes, and tune out everything kind of listening. While listening to a song with the intention of learning it, I kind of look at it in, in three phases. Phase number one is to be able to basically tap the rhythm of the, of the riff and then to you know go through the tab, get some of the basic ideas under your fingers, and to just become familiar with the, with the riff. Phase number two is to listen to the riff while following the tab or the sheet music. This phase really helps a lot. And I mean, I'll, I'll spend a lot of time doing this, just listening and following along with the tab and make sure I know what I'm playing before <laughs> trying to play it. It's like, you know, this is the map of how to play it. And we need to know it in order to follow it. Phase number three gets a little bit deeper, and this is where I like to hum the, the riff or, you know, sing the riff. It's one thing to be able to tap the rhythm. It's another thing to read the music or tab and to be able to follow along. And then it's another thing to internalize the music and the riff and whatever you're learning. I look at phase number three as sort of putting on glasses. If you're looking at something and, and it's everything is a little bit blurry, you, you have a pretty good idea of what's there, but then you put on these glasses and it's like magic. It's just everything is crystal clear and in focus. This is what happens when you are able to hum or sing the riff. A lot of times I'll think, oh, I've heard this song a million times. I know how this thing goes. And it's not until I take this extra step that it just really comes to life and all the little nuance and all the really subtle things that make, you know, usually that make the riff special show themselves. And now it's, it's really starts to sound like the song and develops your ear and usually appreciation of, of the riff and what's going on. Before we go into the next section, I just want to take a moment and thank the beholden to the riff patreon community thank you so much your support means the world to me and really makes all of this possible thank you and that brings us to step number four which is to break it down one thing that is preventing riffians from learning the song is rush into it and go you know full steam ahead and Try to learn everything all at once, right now, full speed, full volume. While the enthusiasm is encouraged and necessary, trying to learn the riff immediately, start to finish, can create a ton of bad habits and hurdles that will prevent you from ultimately learning the riff. So if you notice any of these bad habits or roadblocks coming up, here's what you can do. Start by isolating the riff. Take the song and whittle it down to a small section. To break down the 
isolated riff even a little bit further. I'll look for kind of logical breaks in the music or where it seems like a, a pause happens. Maybe there's a, an actual rest. Um, you could do one measure at a time. You could do four notes at a time. However you'd like to do it, it's best to take the bigger riff and break it into small, more manageable sections. Once we have our smaller sections, really spend some time in each section. Work on maybe this measure, maybe 10 times, this measure 10 times, this measure, and, and so on, so on. Once we have our smaller sections, slowing it down really helps. The key to playing it slower is to keep all of the character and vibe and rhythm and dynamics of the riff. We're just playing it slower. This is one of those bad habits that you can avoid is the speeding up and slowing down in the middle of the riff. Even though it's slower, we still want to keep the essence of the riff. Repeat the same thing section by section. If you got five sections, just spend some time on the first one, second one, third one, and really, really get to know and understand what's happening in each part of the riff. Then start stringing them together slowly. You can start with just the first two, then number two, number three, number three, number four. From there, just keep stacking them, keep tying them together while maintaining the, the vibe of the riff. Once we can string together the full riff, now we can start thinking about increasing the tempo. You can do this by, you know, trying the whole riff, but just bump up the speed all at once, or you can start kind of the process all over again, just now concentrating on tempo. One section at a time, string them together, and then keep bumping it up. While learning new riffs and new songs, it can feel like it's taking forever and we are not making any headway or any progress whatsoever. This is super common and even the mightiest of us think that we suck sometimes. I still remember uh, maybe a year or two ago, I went and saw Elder here in Portland and they destroyed. It was just amazing show. And I remember leaving the, the venue and thinking and being equally inspired and just defeated. Like I needed to go home and practice and make all the music I could possibly can. And the same thought at the same time of you've been wasting your entire life practicing because you're never going to be like these, these guys up here. Every musician I've ever talked to has had these, these sort of thoughts. So when, when these thoughts arise and you know, you're asking, what's the point of all this? The point isn't perfection. The point is improvement and ultimately just having fun. If you're having fun doing, you know, doing whatever you're doing, that's, that's all that matters. A lot of times, these thoughts are a result of focusing only on the big picture or the outcome. I want to learn the full song, note for note, thread the solo, do all, all, all of it. A good way to combat <laughs> these thoughts are to recognize all the small steps that happen along the way. We all start at zero. We all start at the same place. Tony, Iomi, Hendrix, whoever started at zero. They went through the same steps that, that we all need to go through in order to you know, learn whatever music or improve whatever we want to do. So one way to recognize these small steps is to start tracking. This can be as complicated, please don't, or as simple as you want to make it. Great ways to start are even just marking down the day on the calendar Every time you practice, hey, I practice today, boom, practice today, boom. Just the act of writing it down, seeing it, it has the potential of creating momentum. And momentum is the fuel of beasts. 
and will get you wherever you want to go. If you look back at the calendar and you saw, oh my God, I practiced, you know, a month straight or, or, you know, I missed what, three days this month that, you know, that's killer. That feeling when you look at it is what propels you and keeps you motivated to keep shredding. Another way you can help build this momentum and, and track your progress is you could plan out your week of practices. This would be an advanced version of the marking an X off on the calendar. Another easy way to do it is to use a metronome and to just track the BPMs. Let's say you start at 60 and maybe the next day you're up to 70 and then 72 or 75 or whatever. When you're looking back at the week and you know, you still, maybe you don't have the song down, but you're able to look back and say like, wow, you know, I, I started at 60 and now I'm at 80. This, you know, that's improvement. You've gotten somewhere. That, that's, you know, that was a necessary step along the way. And recognizing each one of these small steps as a win is key. And how you develop momentum and keep it going forward. Really hope you dug the video. Hope that it helps you out. And if you're new to the channel, we are beholden to the riff. It's the heaviest bass channel on YouTube. We got bass lessons, pedal demos, all kinds of good stuff to help your playing. Please consider subscribing and thank you so much for checking out the video.